Hey dog lovers, welcome to Have Dog Will Travel. I'm Christy Vaughn. And I'm Josh Henry. And hey, it's it's been a minute. Sorry uh, for the delay between episodes. I feel like we feel a bit out of rhythm, but you know, we've been busy. It's been a busy time. Yeah. Life happens. Life happens. It's uh, summertime and there's been like, you know, some work stuff and travel. other projects and travel. And yeah, I uh, yeah, I, I got to go uh, out of the country for a while to, to work on a, a movie. And I'm not allowed to talk about what. Top but, secret. Uh, it's very, yeah, very top secret. But I can say that I did get to experience some of the stuff that we've talked about regarding how they uh, deal with dogs in other countries, specifically Europe. And so I did see some of that stuff that we've heard about, like dogs getting to run around off leash <laughs> in certain parks and dogs getting, you know, to come into restaurants and pubs. Also known and stuff as my like dream. That. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of pubs actually had signs out front that said we're a dog friendly establishment, you know, kind of inviting you to bring your dog in. So that was really cool. Unfortunately, I did not have Miss Stella Rose with me, so I wasn't able to bring her to these places, but it was really cool to see. However... And I thought, I thought, well, maybe next time I can take her. But then you told me something that was pretty disappointing. About, <laughs> About dogs the... going to other countries, yeah. yes. So apparently in some countries, you can't bring your dog in unless they're fully vaccinated up to their standards and or quarantined for a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, so it's a little bit tricky. Oh, I thought even in. if they'd been vaccinated, they still had to be quarantined. Um, I don't know all of the specifics, oh, <laughs> but okay. I do know that there is uh, some quarantine time involved, which makes me very sad to think about. Right. Well, and I don't know for every country, it's a little bit different. So if you're planning on moving and taking your dog, make sure you check before you make any commitments. Yeah, clearly this is something we need to educate ourselves on so we can enlighten you to how this works. But yeah, if you're if you're planning on taking your dog on an, interna on an international trip, uh, there's a pretty decent chance that it could get yes. quarantined for a period of time. Yes. Yeah. And that makes me sad. I know, me too. It's a terrible thought. But anyway, it's basically the end of summertime now. I think, you know, there's probably going to be a few more weeks of hotness to endure. But, well, depending on where you are. Depending on, yeah. In the South, yes. In the South, definitely. And so we thought we might do a little summertime wrap-up for you folks and talk about some experiences we've had, a few things that we learned, and some things that we want you guys to know for when next summer rolls around. Yeah. Where shall we begin? Hmm. Uh, let's start with the basics. Okay. Let's talk about some of these things we've mentioned in other episodes just in passing, but we wanted to remind everyone uh, just the basics. You know, obviously, don't leave your dog in a car, like yes, ever. God. Like please. ever. And I know more and more states are making it illegal, which is pretty cool. And you can call the authorities and they'll show up and get the dog out. Or maybe if you're like a crazy dog lady like me, you might just want to like bust that person's window open and rescue the dog. Like in that episode of The Office. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Unless, of course, the car is running and the AC is on. Sure. Yeah. Which is, yeah, something to definitely check. And if, if you're going to do that, make sure you put up a sign. Right. So because your window doesn't get busted open. <laughs> if I'm walking by a car and the dog's in there, even if the car is running, I don't necessarily know that the AC is on. True. So, you know, if you, yeah, if you're going to be the person leaving your car, your dog in the car like that, leave a sign so folks know and you're not paying for a new window. Right. But if you do see a dog in that situation, make sure you try and find that person and also call the authorities because that's terrible. Yeah, that's a bad dog. Never, that's a yeah. bad dog parent. Yes. So something I learned with, uh, you know, being, being a dad to, to Stella Rose and having a short hair uh, dog is that dogs can get sunburned. So if you're going to take your dog out on that hiking, boating, fishing, whatever trip, your dog needs to have sunblock, but there is a caveat to that. Yes. Not all sunblock or sunscreen is created equal, especially for pups. So just make sure you check with your vet to see what type of sunscreen they recommend. I know online, if you do a quick search for dog sunscreen, you can see many different brands out there that are all natural, non-toxic, 
um, include safe ingredients. I know I did a quick search and found quite a few on Chewy.com. You can order them from Amazon, but just make sure you check with your vet to uh, see what they recommend. And, you know, Stella's, she's white, uh, short-haired, has pink skin, just like real tender skin. Her ears, her face is real exposed. She's um, basically an albino under that She kind skin. of is, yeah. She's got that real, like, pink skin. So we tend to just spray her down with sunscreen before going out. Um, and we recently went kayaking, which mm-hmm. was super fun. And we have an inflatable kayak. So depending on what type of vessel you have, if you want to take your dog out in it, um, if it's something inflatable, just keep in mind they have nails. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that was something we thought about ahead of time, luckily. Yeah, we didn't learn that the hard way. (laughs) No. Specify. Yeah, we definitely uh, thought of this ahead of time. And we put her little booties on her, which come in handy for many different things, um, but one of which is inflatable kayaks and so we wanted to include her on our kayaking trip but we didn't want her to destroy the kayak so that worked out really well yeah and i think the booties are a great thing uh for a lot of reasons i'm not sure if we ever talked about it before but the reason we got them in the first place is we would take her on bike rides with us sometimes and sometimes we're biking you know or often biking on asphalt and one time her her pads got really uh, kind of worn and a little raw and i felt terrible of course so that's when we got the booties in the first place. And of course, every time we put her on her for the first time, it is absolute hilarity because it's so awkward for her. Uh, and then she settles into it, thankfully. But the booties really helped her. Like, you know, they're like her little dog sneakers. And they really help protect her feet and her paws from, uh, from the asphalt. But that's even, that's in any kind of weather. In hot weather, I think they're very handy in general. I think a great rule of thumb is if you wouldn't walk on it barefoot, don't ask your dog to walk on it, you know, because that can burn their pads and that's that's really you know painful for them. I know this is about summertime, but also the booties come in handy if you live somewhere where it snows. Yeah. And you can protect their pads that way too. So if it's really cold out and it's snowing or there's ice, they have, they're like little sneakers. They've got like rubber bottoms. So yeah. they, they would come in handy in all weather. And you got to, you know, be careful putting them on. You don't want to, you know, shove them on and hurt their little nails and all that. And they have just, different sizes too, right? I think so, yeah. And then they, they kind of Velcro at the end so you can They're super you can cute. Them. And they always attract a lot of attention. We always get people stopping and taking pictures and oh, smiling. God, yeah. People think that's the If most you don't smile at thing. a dog wearing booties... Then what's wrong with you? There's something wrong with you. Yeah, where is your Let's soul? Let's just agree. What has happened? <laughs> what has happened to you? Wrong. Why are you the way you are? <laughs> If you hear snoring, it's because I have a Frenchie sitting in my lap. <laughs> yes. A very he large, wanted, serious-faced Frenchie. A big, fat Frenchie. He wanted to be a part of this episode. <laughs> he always feels left out. So we don't take him very many places because he overheats easily. So he wanted to be a part of this episode. Yeah, part That's of the okay. busyness uh, has also led us to this scenario where we're, we're it's just us. <laughs> we're, not, we're not interviewing anybody this time. Just us in our home studio. Uh, Which is okay. Nice and casual. So, In our um, PJs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you're going to be at home, might as well be comfortable. Exactly. Okay. So what's next, Christy? Oh, um, let's see. So we talked a little bit about the water trip we just did on the kayak. So we definitely brought her life jacket with us. Um, now, Stella's a swimmer in general. She likes to swim. Yep. And she likes water. And she tries to get into the shower whenever she can, um, which is... <laughs> has not been my experience with dogs I've had. But if your dog is a swimmer and you know for a fact they're a swimmer, they still should have a life jacket when you take them out anywhere near water. But just remember not all dogs can swim. I know that's kind of a myth that dogs just inherently like doggy paddle and they swim, but they don't. So some dogs, you know, even like bigger dogs have to learn how to swim. So just make sure they have a life jacket. So if you have a life jacket on you and you probably should just in case, or maybe it's the law, Definitely make sure your dog has one as well. Especially if you're going on a rafting trip or yes. something like that. If you're on like a river and there's fast water, you know, I mean, again, if you think that you might have a hard time swimming in it, there's a good chance your dog right. is going to str- Even if struggle it's as well. calm water. I mean, when we were in the kayak, we were fishing and Stella is, is prey driven. And so <laughs> when we'd cast the line, she would think that it was for her to go and chase. So we'd have She's to She's literally jumped back. out of the boat before to chase right. after the lure that was being cast. So just keep that in mind if you have a dog that's prey driven and, and you're, even if they're not, the accidents happen. They could fall in. And yeah, if there's any type of rapids or movement in the water, 
then just be careful and make sure they have that life jacket on. So there's different brands out there. Also make sure you have the right size and that it fits properly and that it's, you know, not too tight on them and squeezing them. Um, and one then, of the nice things I like about the life jacket too, especially the one that we have is it has a handle on the back. So if you yes. were to fall out of a boat and we're on the river or wherever it might be, bam, you can reach down and grab that mm-hmm. handle and got her. Yep. 60 pounds out yeah. of the water. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then if you are in a lake, like we tend to be, uh, just keep in mind, it was all over the news this summer about the toxic algae. Just keep in mind that it does happen um, when there's an overgrowth of algae. Uh, make sure your, your dog's up to date on vaccinations. I mean, in this case, if it's toxic, obviously a vaccination isn't going to help. So make sure you do your research about the body of water you're about to go into. Um, if you're in salt water, make sure you rinse your dog off um, when you get out of the water because the salt can build up on their coat. Also, don't let them drink the salt water. You wouldn't drink it, so don't let your dog drink it. And they don't know any better, so just keep fresh water handy. Well, nowadays, you know, it's a little bit of a risk even drinking river or uh, river water is probably safe, but lake water specifically, yes. you know, so, you know, bring bottled water for them as well. And class, classable bowls are super handy. Yeah, there's a, a lot of cool little devices out there for bringing water to give to your dogs. So anytime you're outside in the summer um, for any period of time, make sure you have fresh water on hand. Yeah, and Stella's swimming brings up another thing that I learned when I first got her, which is that dogs can also get ear infections. And so if you're going to take your dog and let them go swimming, sometimes even if you bathe them, you're going to want to make sure you take some gauze and clean their ears afterwards. Get your vet to show you how. Maybe I can do a video on it later and a little tutorial. Poor Stella hates it every time. But dogs can get ear infections, so you want to make sure you clean any any kind of residual, you know, lake water, river water, whatever, out of their ears. Absolutely. Speaking about the heat, make sure you take precautions with dogs who tend to overheat or get just a little too hot. Um I don't take my Frenchies out into the heat just other than to go to the bathroom outside, Um, but they do make cooling vests. So for some dogs, um, it it works out really well to have a cooling vest. There's different types. There's kind that you soak in water and then freeze, and then there's others that are just, they have like a gel inside of them. There's also cooling pads that you can bring with you. So if you're going to to be outside having a picnic or going camping make sure you bring something that can cool them off even if it's just a towel that you can soak in cool water and speaking of camping someone went on a camping trip earlier this summer and took stella i did it was pretty fantastic we uh i went with my family and we had a little uh little camping trip and i it was funny because you know stella's such an inside dog she goes on all these adventures with us but she's inside most of the time and I grew up in the country, and so dogs getting ticks was just kind of par for the course. Like they would—they were mostly outside dogs, and they would, you know, get ticks. Uh, and we'd usually, if we, when we found them, would take them off, and uh, they'd be fine. But I guess I kind of had forgotten since one, it had been a long time since I had a dog, and then uh, two, her being inside most of the time. But if you're going to take your dog on a camping trip, and I think for especially for people who have mostly grown up in a city or even a suburb, they tend to not know that this can be a thing. So if you're going to take your dog on a camping trip or just somewhere out in the woods, whatever, you do have to check them for ticks, just like you have to check yourself. And there's the the best way is you want to try to, you know, heat up the, a pair of tweezers or something like that really hot and then grab the tick with it so that it kind of lets go and then you pull it off. There's also a device out there, and I don't know the name of it, but <laughs> if you look it up online, if you Google it, you can find it. There is a, a little, like, it's like a plastic thing it's a little tool that makes grabbing the tick really easy i've actually used it i got it in like a like a bark box or something and i don't know the name of the device if you you google tick removal tool for dogs or something yes i'm sure it'll pop up but it was really handy um i think used it on sadie one time and it made getting the tick out very easy and most campgrounds if it's an actual you know if you go camp out in the woods it's you know whatever but if if you're going to an actual campground, they usually have leash laws. And so one thing that uh, I found that's pretty handy for, you know, whether camping or whether we're going fishing, which we've used it here going fishing before, it's this little, just kind of like a little spike and you can just screw it into the ground and then clip their leash to that. And then bam, they're right there wherever you need them to be. They're not going to wander off and get eaten by a bear. Well, I think Stella could take a bear. I don't want to think about that. No, I don't no. But maybe, maybe. 
She's mm. she's pretty. She'd pretty probably vicious. put up a good fight, but I don't even want to think about that scenario because yeah. I'd I'd probably have to beat up a bear if I saw it going after her. Oh, I would go after dogs. a bear for yeah. sure. I mean, it, I I don't think I could take a bear. I'm not crazy. But, like, I would go well, after a bear if a bear's attacking my dog. You know, like, the, the adrenaline starts pumping when parents see, like, right. you know, a car on their child and they lift the car and you hear about that, like, f- you know, freak strength that people get. I uh, could get crazy superhuman yeah. strength and throw the you bear. probably would. <laughs> through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> just pick it up over my head and toss it. Well, let's, you know. Let's just keep. Not her, that I condone bear, bear violence. I, I don't want. I, I want the bear to be. Well, no. Okay, I, too. I like animals, and I don't. I don't want to harm any animals. But if they go after my dog, then yeah, all bets are off. It's exactly. Game changer. It's like those squirrels that were throwing figs at my dogs. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not about squirrel violence, but that was it. Game on. Yeah. You're going after my dog. Mm-mm. Yeah, you've shown aggression. <laughs> so you started it. Yeah, you threw the first punch. <laughs> Dropped the gauntlet, so to speak. <laughs> I also caught a fish uh, while we were camping, and it was really funny to watch Stella. Like, I had it, you know, um, tethered to the bank so I could bring it home, and the lady cooked it up and we ate it. It was pretty amazing, little, little catfish. But uh, Stella was, was very curious and did a, a great deal of checking it out. But <laughs> probably for the best, if that if you're in that situation, make sure your dog doesn't eat the fish. Yeah, you you just never know. The the uncooked fish. That yeah, could there could be bacteria. Oh, yeah, just probably not a good idea. And if we think about you know where we've come from, wolves and you know domestication of dogs, like it's just it's crazy to think about you know a, a dog not being able to eat something in the wild. Whatever but, the hell it finds. But they can't yeah. anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a sort of a weird kind of unfortunate thing that we've through the domestication of them we've kind of made them i think that i think i think the domestication is why dogs a lot of dogs have allergies now and Mm -hmm. um very difficult to manage diets in some instances yeah i mean ultimately they were scavengers they're used to eating right whatever the hell they find lying around yeah i mean wolves eat whatever right yeah they don't have allergies they're not gluten-free right they're not dying (laughs) of cancer yeah yeah Sorry, dogs. Ugh, this is depressing. Okay, moving on. Let's see, what else we got? Oh, uh, so we, we talked about dogs overheating. Even, there's certain types of dogs, like the Frenchies, you know, they can eat, overheat fairly easily. But even bigger dogs, you know, if you're getting hot, again, always use yourself as a gauge for what your dog might be going through. If you feel like it's too hot, take a break. Give your dog a break. Chill out in the shade. Give them some water. Let them have a cool down time. Yes. If your dog does overheat, uh, we learned through a difficult way a long time ago that you can cool them down too quickly. Too quickly. So if you think your dog is overheating, you need to start to cool them very gradually. Like don't dunk them in a pool of cold water or in the bathtub filled with cold water, which is what your your instinct is to do. I would recommend getting them to the vet or an emergency vet as quickly as possible. But if you have a towel nearby that you can soak in cold water, you can put that on their belly and on the, the pads of their paws. That can help cool them down gradually. Um, obviously get them out of the sun, out of the heat, um, in air conditioning or in front of a fan. Um, but don't try and cool them too quickly because that can lead to them going into shock, which is just as bad. So you kind of have to do it gradually. Um, But if you are afraid to take your dog too far or in murky water where you can't see the bottom, which kind of freaks me out, you can always opt for getting a kiddie pool and putting it in your backyard and having your own little pool party. A pool potty. (laughs) We have uh, have an inflatable (laughs) one, but I also have another one I need to go get. Um, And uh, yeah, you can let your dogs frolic around outside in the kiddie pool. Just like parents do with their kids. Yeah, we tried to have a pool party this summer. They didn't. They weren't really into it, though. Well, I think it's it's the Frenchies definitely didn't give a damn about it. No. And then I think for Stella and Sadie, it was just it's like it comes up to halfway up their legs, and they're like, "What? <laughs> yeah, why? what am I supposed to do with this? I can't really swim in it." Also, I think if we were in it, like hanging out, they might have been more inclined to hang out with us. Potentially, they're yeah. all about just hanging out with us, yeah. and being close to That's us. True. 
And they weren't really feeling like the outfits I had them in, and the, <laughs> the doggles, <laughs> and the bandanas, and you know the festive stuff that I always dress them in. They weren't really feeling that. No, I'd probably put them in a bad mood. So quite possibly. <laughs> And doggles are another great idea for your dog uh, in certain instances. You know, if it's if you're going to be in a situation where there's a lot of wind in their face, they can protect their eyes. You know, I think that she appreciates the sun, you know, sunglasses aspect of her yeah. doggles to some degree. Yeah. You think? Maybe. It's like the, it's like the booties. At first, she's like, "This is not cool. Yeah. Get this the hell off me." And then she settles in, and she's like, "She's like, okay, I appreciate yeah. it. She can appreciate." Yeah, it. I mean. I don't think she loves them, but it's for her own good. <laughs> well, she's not in them frequently, too. So I think every true. time is like the first time for That's her. That's true. It takes her a little while to get used to them. Yeah. All right. What else? So this is going to become relevant again in a few months. But if you didn't already know this, odds are really good. Your dog doesn't like fireworks. No, no dog likes fireworks. Yeah. They, so they don't like them at all. They're terrifying to them. Uh, they're loud to us. So it's even louder to them. So yeah, just keep them away from any of the fireworks displays that you go to in your city. Keep them calm if you need to stay home with them or have someone stay with them. Just know that they might react differently um, every time they hear something like that. And well, of course, the inclination of, is to bring the family to the fireworks show and the dog yeah. is part of the family, but it's not the same for them. They don't right. give a damn about this, the visual spectacle of it. No. They're not enjoying it in any way. It's just a lot of loud noises that they can't pinpoint and it freaks them the hell out. Yeah. And, you know, ordinarily we'd say we want to include our dog in everything that we do, but that's not one of the things. We want to keep them protected and inside the house and just know that they, they may run and hide or you may have a dog who tries to escape. So depending on their personality, just know your dog. Um, if you need to give them something to calm them down, there's some uh, different treats out there that have calming effects. Um, some you know natural supplements. There's always prescription if it CBD gets really treats. bad. There's CBD. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of options. So if you know that your dog reacts to loud noises in that way, and um, you want to try and keep them calm, you know either stay home with them and and Try and, you know, console them or, you know, give them something that will calm them down. Yeah. And so it's been a busy summer. Rafting, camping, um, kayaking. We did some hikes. Fishing. At some new places. Yeah, we went to some new parks and some great some great spots. Do <laughs> a lot of exploring. Yep. And, uh, and so, yeah, we've covered a lot of ground this summer. Mostly, we did. pretty much all with Stella because she's the, the one that can handle it the best. Yes. And, um... The best suited, shall we say. Well, we did take Sadie the other night when there was the harvest moon. The moon that only comes around, what, every 40 years or something? Well, no, I, the, the thing was, it was the only time I want to see a moon like that. The harvest moon, I don't think, is that rare. But it's the only time we oh, see a moon true, like on the that Friday on the Friday the 13th. the 13th. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so... Which then, of course, a storm blew in and covered right. the moon. <laughs> so it didn't last long, but it was... we Yeah, you know, we tried. And we took Sadie and Stella and we parked... At, uh, in, at the inside of a, a park and we had a little picnic in the in the back of the truck and we had Sadie and Stella in the back with us and it was nice until yeah we felt this nice breeze roll in we're like oh that's really nice and then we saw the lightning and heard the thunder I'm like okay never mind but things like that um, you know if you have a dog that's you know skittish or you know not that great with other dogs or with people if you take them on short little trips like that obviously not when it's about to storm because then that causes a whole other set of issues but if you take them out just for short trips to expose them to being out and about and doing things like that and going on just small adventures not too far from home I think that's a really great way to kind of build up to doing those longer trips maybe doing a road trip or going, you know, for a longer hike or going camping and staying overnight somewhere unfamiliar, just exposing them little by little, I think is a really good idea. So we don't, we don't take Sadie a lot of places because she's not the greatest with some dogs. It's just hit or miss with her. Um, but we did take her the other night and she loved being out. So that was fun. Yeah. I think the more you expose them to little bits at a time, and especially the younger you can start, you know, yes. especially when they're pups. You know, they're at, a, they're at an age where it's still going to freak them out, but just expose them to stuff little bits at a time. And then as they do more of that, they're going to be way more calm as they grow up. And especially if you have a dog like a pit bull, 
you want them to be calm in whether it's a social situation or whatever it might be. And the more you can do that, the, the better off it'll be for everybody. Absolutely. And I guess we'll probably give some tips about some fall trips or some ideas or uh, suggestions for things you can do in the fall as the weather starts to cool off. I know there's tons of festivals coming up and all over the country and just fun things to do in the cooler weather as we approach the holidays, which I can't believe it's getting to be that time of year. Yeah, fall is definitely a great outdoor time for your dog, just like it is, again, for you, because the weather's a lot more temperate and easier for everything to for everyone to enjoy it. So anyway, we had a really great summer, and we hope you did as well, and we hope you learned some things that you can take into next summer and have an even better summer with your dog and take them on all kinds of adventures and have lots of fun. So remember, uh, check us out on social media. We are on uh, Instagram and Facebook at, at Have Dog Will Travel Podcast. We're also Have Dog Will Travel Podcast on YouTube, but we're trying to do better about <laughs> being more active on YouTube. Uh, we're working on it. And uh, our website is Have Dog Will Travel Podcast.com. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we've talked about, uh, on this episode, please feel free to hit us up and let us know what you think. If you have any favorite products that you'd like to promote and let us know about those, then please do that as well. And we'd love to hear from you. And that's it for this episode. So uh, remember, if you want to take your dog on a trip, but you're worried it could all unravel, just listen to us have dog will travel. <laughs>